since I wanted to make the previous video short and concise with the main intention of addressing hysteria related to COPPA implementation, I did not provide opinions of solutions in that video. I will detail what I think is the best implementations of compliance rationally in this video. For me, this is the most important thing you should be concerned about. YouTube will use machine learning for COPPA compliance. Many have pointed out that this was not required by the Federal Trade Commission, of which they are correct. Though artificial intelligence can provide some benefits such as reducing labour, thus increasing profits, the seemingly intentional secrecy of YouTube failing to publicly disclose algorithms is argued to have some ulterior motive such as silencing some political viewpoints. Because of public dissatisfaction and arising video sharing sites such as BitChute, it will ironically decrease profits in the long run. More importantly, it could mistakenly label some videos as child-friendly, of which the Federal Trade Commission may catch on. Though the fine will probably not be $42,530, Creators will have to bear any consequences of the algorithm and not YouTube as they accepted the terms and conditions of YouTube which includes the company's right of promoting, in this case for YouTube Kids, your content on their services, which will eventually require the video to be labelled as for kids. This is a legitimate concern based on a close reading of YouTube's terms and conditions, specifically licensed to YouTube. YouTube could consider disclosing their algorithms such that it does not violate intellectual property law and give malicious sites a good hand, such as not revealing all or most of the source code but providing enough evidence for the public to make a good judgement. As another option, they could reduce the use of machine learning algorithms and develop it until it is sufficiently accurate providing an opt-out option in the first few years of public implementation. COPPA does not mandate that operators of general audience sites, as defined by the COPPA frequently asked questions, research about age demographics. Remember that content creators are operators as defined in Title 16 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 312.2, and the FTC's complaint against YouTube, paragraph 42. There are at least some videos that cater to a general family audience, such as mine, and YouTube can consider this exception in their video settings so that content creators can select it to earn ad revenue for family-friendly content instead of fitting into a specific category that could result in a substantial revenue loss. Creators make money through AdSense for YouTube monetization. The exception to the general audience notes that non-compliance violations arise if operators know about the child's age or grade through explicit mention by a concerned parent. Some allege that most parents don't mind personalized ads for children, but popularity does not imply validity as addressed in the previous video. To comply with the exception, YouTube could implement granular controls on AdSense to limit personalized advertisements for age groups under 13 or, preferably, permanently disable this age group option. An age gate implied by some people is already in place, albeit for those under 18. In this system, one has to log in to watch age-restricted content to verify their age. The YouTube COPPA compliance option for videos takes a one-size-fits-all approach and bars comments, likes and targeted advertising from the labelled video. While keeping the My Video is for Kids option, YouTube could instead bar comments, likes, and targeted advertising for the following. Logged out viewers to prevent children using private notes. Google accounts under 13 to be in full compliance with Gopa. 
In addition, for people 13 and over, this measure would be a boon to Google's economic growth. By verification through signing up, Google can earn more money from the nature of their Google account. It is in connected with other services such as Google Drive and Google Photos, of which have paid options. People posit that a solution is implicit consent, or the notion that parents are already consenting because they let their child use their account. However, this is not verifiable, and this verifiability is required in COPPA under Title 16, Code of Federal Regulations, Section 312.5. Some allege that this is laughable because it only contains methods of verifiable consent that is traditional methods. This cherry picking avoids the fact that such methods defined in Title 16 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 312.5b2, are examples, not the only options. In fact, Title 16 of the Code of Federal Regulations Section 3.1.2.5b.1 specifically states that one has to take into account available technology and must be reasonably calculated. A solution to comply with Title 16 Code of Federal Regulations Section 3.1.2.5 while allowing parents to reasonably consent to their child's activities is to have an easily accessible consent option in the viewer interface in the main YouTube application or website. Before lending a child their device, parents could select granular controls for targeted advertising and analytics tracking. This could be implemented for all videos of all types of audiences because such granular controls would take the burden of creators and their one-size-fits-all approach for labeling videos and make parents feel in control of their child's safety. However, such controls should not be as invasive as cookie consent windows as enacted by the European Union, nor should it be so hidden that it promotes non-compliance with COPPA. Nevertheless, this allows for the nature of uncertainty in machine learning mislabeling, together with protecting children's privacy from negligence.